Welcome back to the show. We got a great one lined up for you. BIS, are they shutting down Embridge? And what does it mean for XRP in the ledger? Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. There we go. There's the screen. You can follow us on Twitter, YouTube, and digperspectives.com for exclusive content. Right now, $2.53 trillion market cap for cryptocurrency. The market is off by 0.9%. $71,900 plus for Bitcoin right now. $2,600 plus for Ethereum. $120 billion plus market cap for Tether. And $34 billion plus for USDC. XRP at the number seven spots, 52 cents. We see we're off 0.7 in the 24-hour. We're off 1.1 in the seven day range of price right now between 52 and 53 cents. I want to remind everybody that you can join the DPMG tonight. You get a weekly private call and I don't mind telling you very quickly here. I know you can't keep up with everything and the markets are collapsing and things are changing so fast around you, but you can get all the tools you need, investor checklists, portfolio creation, groups and courses to gap fill your knowledge and the support from an amazing mastermind community. These are some of the smartest people you're ever going to run across. I know that because that's exactly how I feel every time I'm in there. And I tell you, this is the time when real wealth is made. Take advantage of the offer that we have. The window is open. It is a minimal investment into yourself to get all of these things. And tonight, if you join us, you will hear the continued conversation and case study on trust. You know what the wealthiest people in the world do to protect their assets. It is so important that we grow our mental knowledge along with our portfolio so we're not soon separated. I hope you'll join us, digperspectives.com. Click the DPMG. You will get the Freedom Zone for free if you join the DPMG. We'll see you tonight at 6 p.m. All right, so let's get started right here. Leading U.S. economist and gold proponent Peter Schiff has warned about the dollar crisis could begin as soon as 2025. And I have said a bunch of times on this channel, the more we see the private issuance of stable coins tells me just how big the hyperinflation problem for the dollar is about to be. And we see everyone from BlackRock to Ripple to PayPal and everyone and now Solana, and they're all doing it. I even had a tweet that was like, you get a car, you get a car like Oprah, right? But if you get a stable coin, you get a stable coin. Why? So they can have all these new use cases to soak up these bonds that will be coming home. Maybe in 2025. Bitwise executive, shout out to this guy, Matt, I believe it is. He's amazing. He says, the U.S. dollar doesn't need to collapse for Bitcoin to hit 200K. And I agree with that. You just have to have people realize what the demand is and the fact that as long as BlackRock and Fidelity are in it, why wouldn't you be in it? Not financial advice, but that's the method I'm using. Just my digital perspectives. And then I want you to listen to Mark Yusko talk about 100K Bitcoin in 30 days. How about that one? Come on in. Contrary to popular belief, Bitcoin would, would have a breakout year uh, post having and, and into this Thanksgiving period, we would likely see six digits mm. because yeah. what's going to happen, I believe this Thanksgiving is the network value today is somewhere in the, call it the high 50 thousands. Well, that was the having event occurs. So the, the network value should double. The fair value is going to be somewhere in the 80 thousands, mm -hmm. but we'll go right through fair value during this whole Thanksgiving, you tell two friends and they tell two friends yeah. and so on and so forth, like the Brett commercial. And I think between kind of Thanksgiving and December, we're likely to see, and it might even run into the first part of the new year, we're likely to see the same type of parabolic move that we saw in each of the previous cycles. I say bring it on. I got time for it. I got room on the calendar. How about you guys? But let's keep going. There's a lot to look at here. And we know currently right now the SEC is a mess and they have made a mess of the crypto industry. Layden Stewart, I reported this the other day, but I need to level set for where we're going next. 
uh, a former top SEC lawyer is basically admitting now, I've come to fight for the actual crypto industry. I can't believe what's going on. I'm paraphrasing. You know, now that I'm actually fighting for the crypto industry, it's obvious that we need some real leadership and direction when it comes to regulation and legislation. But let's look at this. Shout out to Meta Law Man. He says, if Trump wins, one of these things will happen. One, Gary Gensler resigns promptly, as is the tradition when there is a change in administration. Two, Trump asks for Gensler's resignation on day one, and then Gensler would comply. Three, Trump replaces Gensler as the SEC chairman, but allows him to continue as a commissioner. Trump fires Gensler, and he leaves the SEC. Trump fires Gensler. Gensler refuses to leave and sues the federal court, arguing that Trump has some le- or that Gensler has some legal right to remain as a commissioner until his term expires in 2026. The normal move is option one, which is what Jay Clayton did when Biden was elected in 2020. If Gensler chooses option five, he would likely lose in court, but the process would take time and cause chaos in the interim. The Supreme Court, by the way, has never ruled specifically on the question of the president's right to fire an SEC commissioner. Here is a good discussion on the legal issue for anyone who wants to see it. It's on my feed and and James's too. Shout out to James for that. I don't want to say number five, but number five sounds like Gary Gensler, doesn't it? Whatever the worst case scenario is, we should assume that, prepare for that, and then hope that it's number one. Prepare for number five and hope that it's number one. Meanwhile, I got to give you the first part of this. This is uh, James or, or Jeremy Allaire, excuse me, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Allaire from Circle and USDC. Take a listen. Most major governments, whether it's the U.S. government, the European government, the Japanese government, uh, or here in Hong Kong as well, the primary focus of regulators is making sure that there's clear rules around all of this private sector innovation that's happening. And so the private sector is innovating in digital currency at, a, at an extraordinary pace. Uh, and you know, at the same time, yes, there are certainly experiments that governments are running where the governments want to run technology themselves, want to roll that technology out to retail users themselves. But I think in the market, there's a very strong preference, whether it be from the financial intermediaries themselves and the end users that are using these technologies to, to tap the private sector uh, for that innovation. We've certainly seen that in China, where the ECNY, right, people would rather use Alipay and WeChat Pay. Uh, and so um, the focus of most governments is let's make sure there's good, safe rules around stable coins. And while they might continue doing R&D on, on government-administered projects, um, our expectation is that really the private sector and open source technologies and open internet technologies are really what are going to take off and thrive uh, in this new internet financial system. I think he's got it spot on. And when you talk about the private sector taking off, that means you got to have some form of regulatory clarity and legislative clarity in order for that private sector to truly take off. And Jeremy, I know, believes that we're going to get it in the near term, and so do I. But looking at this, again, you can see, following the announcement of partnership between Coinbase and Visa, users are eligible debit cards will soon be able to deposit and withdraw funds from their accounts with the crypto exchange instantly. See, This is the other hint that we are about to get some kind of legislative clarity. Coinbase has still been in a lawsuit with the SEC, but they're moving forward to bring consumer-facing services to the world and their customers. So this tells me it soon shall be clear what you can do, because Visa is not scared. Visa didn't pack up and go home and say, Coinbase, maybe we should wait till we got clarity. Oh, boy. And then there's this. Now, I played this the other day, but unfortunately, I need to level set. This is Janet Yellen, who I cannot figure out how she became the U.S. Treasurer. I I just, I am lost for words. Oh, boy. But even the U.S. Treasury emblem on the podium itself 
doesn't want to answer the question about the, the safety of U.S. dollar as a reserve currency, as Janet's being asked here. These will dent global growth. Um, can you elaborate more on the near-term economic impact of these policies and, and over a longer time horizon? How concerned are you about the potential impact of the dollar status as the world's reserve currency? Um, let's see. Um. Oh, that's funny, isn't it? Isn't that funny? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I can't. I, I, I don't, I can't. Well, take a look at this. Speaking about the confidence of the U.S. dollar, how about the confidence of the current payment systems being used around the world? The future of the BIS involvement in Enbridge was cast into doubt, and this was done two days ago following a report by Bloomberg that top bank officials, financial executives, discussed the possibility of shutting Enbridge down during a meeting in Washington. Well, you remember, SWIFT is going to be doing live trials of digital asset transactions in 2025. I bet they're like, look, just let us do it. We don't need Enbridge. And don't forget, Enbridge, one of the models of Enbridge, according to James Wallace from Ripple, is in fact the XRP ledger. When you have a digital dollar and you have a digital you know, real, you know, or digital, digital pound, you, know, you obviously need to have some, some way to interact cross-border. Yeah. So I think the BIS call this a multi-CBDC model. Um, the, the, uh, one of the ideas is you use a sort of a neutral bridge currency to go from one to the other, similar to the model I explained earlier where at with our on-demand liquidity. There you go. So now, will it be shut down? I don't know, but I want you to listen to this gentleman from the U.S. State Department. Shout out to Rob Cunningham. Give him a follow. Take a listen. The development of an alternative to the SWIFT system and the undermining of the dollar's role threaten democracy. Such, such steps are often accompanied by the strengthening of authoritarian regimes. Uh, as a result, the, the international norms and values that underpin the democratic order will be undermined creating more room for anti-democratic actions by autocracies. So um, the USA, of course, can't let that happen. It can't let it happen. Uh, you have, of course, military power, and you have economic power, and you have the US dollar as the world's reserve currency. So I think people are very concerned that should, you know, because of these innovations in digital assets in particular, if there really is a movement towards um, Certain stable coins, for example, payment stable coins that are not, uh, you know, clearly they're not digital fiat because that would be a CBDC. Mm -hmm. um, and they're also not tokenized commercial bank money. And so if there's ambiguity over that regulation and over what those uh, stable coins might be, people are really worried that that's going to be a movement away from the U.S. dollars, the world's reserve currency. Hmm. And that is a national security issue for the United States, as well as a, a deeply monetary policy issue as well. How about that? Right? So now we have the State Department, and now we have the older clip that I've played for quite some time with Commissioner Pham from the CFTC, echoing the same thing. And actually, the State Department officials echoing her comment from a couple years ago. You know, the plot thickens is the way I see this, ladies and gentlemen. The plot thickens. Going to what Augustine Carston says from the BIS, whose term ends in June, said on Saturday at an event of the group, group of 30 in the U.S. Capitol, we cannot directly support, listen carefully, we cannot directly support any project for the BRICS because we cannot operate with countries that are subject to sanctions. I want to be very clear about that. So this brings in a much larger conversation because of the sanctions. So the bank is saying we can't use Enbridge essentially because it ties in to these sanctioned countries. So something has to be done. But it doesn't necessarily mean that Enbridge goes away, I don't think. Maybe just the idea of how they were going to originally use it because of this, but never again, you know, don't forget, sanctions can change. Things can change here. So uh, head on a swivel. I'm not convinced of anything just yet. 
Why would the BIS consider shutting down Project Enbridge? Because they never really needed it. The fact is, anyone could just use XRP. It's possible Enbridge was just a distraction from the start, with XRP being the only solution all along. I'll be sharing more information shortly. You know, this is the part I like about this. As the BIS malls shutting down Enbridge, its innovation hub calls the project a public good. Isn't that what the XRP ledger is? A public good. Well, of course it is. Don't forget, by the way, that nothing moves on the XRP ledger without the use of XRP. Come on in. Yeah, and don't forget about this. Codius is coming. And I was just talking to my friend Sean in the DPMG, and we're both aligned on this. Think of it. The real USD is going to launch on Ethereum network and the XRP ledger. XRP ledger snap is on Ethereum compatible and the XRP ledger. Then you're going to see the launch of Codius, and, uh, which is being know, redone. Stefan Thomas right? and Evan. And I don't need to play the clip. But then we're going to see smart contracts at a level you've never seen before, which is Codius. Well, this sounds like things that are being set up to mass exodus everyone off the Ethereum network, which I think is a good idea, not from a maxi point of view, but from the point of view of being an American patriot. And I don't think people should be on a network that is backed by Wan Zhang, which is communist uh, China party, right? That's a problem. So as Christian Carlo had said one time, you know, he who controls the gold makes the rules. He who controls the payment rails runs the world, ladies and gentlemen. And look at this, a reminder from Eggrag Crypto, worst case scenario, if XRP is $4.43, it may just be in comparison to Bitcoin finally hitting that 100K mark. And you could see it, 130 Bitcoin would be $5.76 XRP, 150 Bitcoin is $6.64, 170 Bitcoin could put us at $7.53 for XRP, and 200K Bitcoin at $8.86. None of this is financial advice, but I tell you what, I love that we're here together. What a ride this is. I can't wait to bring it in for a landing. I do smell a new all-time high coming. It's maybe 2025. Bring it on. Not financial advice from me or anyone else. I'll catch all of you on the next one.